Wentz Financial Group presents Zips Basketball Weekly with John Gross. Investment management for your lifetime. Hosted by Joe Dunn. Contributing sponsors include Summa Health. It's your health. Let's own it together. Hilton Akron Fairlawn, the preferred hotel of Zips Athletics. And the Spaghetti Warehouse, famous for its 15-layer lasagna. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the final edition of Zips Basketball Weekly with Mid-American Conference Coach of the Year, John Gross, brought to you all season long by the Wentz Financial Group. Well, one week ago, we were sitting here talking about big wins over Ohio University and Kent State. Everyone looking ahead to the Mid-American Conference Tournament. The Zips were assured of postseason tournament one way or another. And then, Coach, the entire country and the entire sports world kind of turned upside down. No, it sure did, and uh, understandably so. You know, obviously, it's, uh, you know, hard to accept. There's disappointment. Um, the abrupt ending it was just that. It was so, so abrupt. You didn't have time to prepare for yeah. it. But uh, understandably so, and, you know, really, if thoughts and prayers go out to those, you know, courageous leaders that had to make really difficult yeah. decisions, uh, at the forefront of those decisions were the health and safety of, you know, not only uh, student athletes, but people in general. So, you know, certainly appreciative of that and, you know, wish everyone out there that's been affected directly uh, by the coronavirus, you know, uh, you know, we wish them our best speedy recovery yeah. and uh, health. Uh, and also those people that certainly have had their worlds, as you said, turned upside down that, yeah. uh, you know, our thoughts and thoughts and prayers are with them as well. You know, some things certainly uh, uh, trump basketball. That doesn't make it any easier um, in terms of what we had to deal with this past week. Coach, I'm struck by uh, sometimes as a basketball coach at the college level, you're not only a basketball coach, you got to be a life coach. And I know a lot of your players extremely disappointed the final time they'll play college basketball. How did you handle it up in Cleveland, and how are the guys doing right now? Well, the, to the best of our ability, you know, certainly right when it happened, difficult, uh, especially for the seniors. Yeah. You know, realizing that, uh, you know, at that point, they're not having a chance to participate and compete for another championship, mm -hmm. which is what they wanted to do. And obviously, within a couple hours after that, then they find out that, uh, you know, the NCAA tournament's off limits as well. And so that's when I think it really hit them. Um, you know, and obviously, they had a lot of different emotions at that point. But I think certainly within, you know, 24 hours of that, and whether it's individual conversations you have with guys or text messaging or, you know, uh, our, a few of us got together, uh, different formats of communication because we were a little bit uh, scattered once we got back and, and uh, indecisive in terms of what was going to go on uh, moving forward. I think they trying to get them to realize, Joe, that it was a heck of a journey yeah. and that the journey is just as important as the results and what they learned uh, as people, as students, as players, the growth and transformation that I saw of our team of individual uh, guys as players, as people, what those guys have accomplished as students, you know, just want them to understand that that, you know, the journey, and really it's the journey and the process for me as a coach that, that, uh, that with this particular group that I'm gonna miss, uh, miss the most. I love to compete and love competition, love challenges and love to win just like everybody else. But, you know, for me, it was just such a special group of guys and the opportunity to be with them every day, you know, on a, on a pretty much a daily basis yeah. is what I'm going to miss the most. As you can tell, fans, it was a heck of a year by all the hardware here on the set. We're going to talk about that, the postseason awards, a little bit later. But this basketball team was picked to finish fifth in the East, and they came up with 24 wins. That's the fifth time in Zip basketball history that a team has won 24 games in the regular season. So. Coach, uh, let's talk about some of the highlights because there were some great highlights. 24 wins, seven road wins. Uh, best road win, I, I thought the best road win you had was at Buffalo. You're playing without Tyler Cheese, uh, haven't had a lot of success up there in Buffalo, and you come up with just a great road win. No, it was a great win, and we had several of them. And you know, the guys set a goal at the beginning of the year, you know, back in September when we got together at our retreat that, you know, they wanted to finish 500 or better on the road. 
um, that's the sign of, you know, to do that is, is, is challenging, you yeah. know, hard to do. And uh, not many teams do that uh, throughout the course of a college basketball season. So, you know, in terms of our road and neutral games and games away from the jar, we finished nine and five if yeah. you include both road and neutral and just had a really good disposition about us on the road. You know, I think that, uh, you know, to do that, you have to have really good leadership. I've said this before, and we had great leadership in our locker room uh, with Christian and our seniors. And then on top of that, you have to have really good chemistry. You have to be really connected, um, experience helped. I thought we were really a poised team uh, when adversity hit us. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned the Buffalo yeah. situation without cheese or numerous games where we came back from double digit uh, deficits. Right. and. A lot of that has to do with your leadership, your chemistry, your poise, and your ability to handle adversity. And you know, as we talked about earlier about it being a journey, you know, my hope is that they can take those things they learn from athletics and being a part of our program and then apply them, and, and obviously specifically talking about the seniors right now, apply that to, you know, when they leave. Exactly. Things got really tight at the tail end of the regular season. The Zips needed uh, home wins over Ohio University and Kent State to assure themselves of the conference title. and. Coach, the fans were there, the team was there. That was a great way to end the season. Well, I just thought the Zips Nation just continued. We were talking about this morning. I was driving in, stopped at a place this morning. And people were talking about how the, the fans, the, you know, the attendance just kept increasing as the year went on. And I think, you know, uh, our people, or Zips Nation was, you know, proud of our team and they could recognize how together our team was, how well they played together, uh, and the character of our team, you know. I've always said, you know, Northeast Ohio fans in general and uh, our Zips fans are the same way. They really appreciate blue collar and teamism and togetherness and, you know, quality play. And, and um, certainly I think they, they felt that way. And it showed by the way that our attendance just climbed yeah. and climbed at the end of the year. And uh, they, our guys were fun to watch. Exactly. The one thing you have stressed, Coach, since you've been here, this is, of course, is your third season as head coach. Of the Zips, you have stressed defense. We'd like to talk a little bit about some of the great defensive efforts your team had this year. Uh, boy, that win over Eastern Michigan, 59 to 58, the last second block by Channel Banks, that goes down as one of the better defensive efforts. Yeah, it's always our bread and butter, and you're yeah. right, Joe. And, you know, we've had now two years back to back, we've been number one and number three in the league, respectively, ranked nationally, uh, you know, very high up there in back to back years. And I've just always felt like if you can defend and take care of the ball and rebound, although that's an area we need to address in the offseason. There were times where I thought we excelled there, other times where we were, you know, maybe not as good as we needed to be, and it's something we can really attack. But, but uh, all in all, you know, we defended well. We held teams to a point per possession yeah. or less 21 times out of 31 games, which is hard to do. And uh, our team defense was – you know, really one, certainly one of our strong suits. One of the great comebacks this year was that game against Ohio University at home. Coach, you're down 13 points at halftime. Then you come back, get a great defensive effort in that final 10 minutes of the game to win it. We did, held them to 17 points yeah. and had our lowest defensive efficiency rating in a half of the year. And really did it too. You talk about dealing with adversity, you know, Christian fouls out with eight and change right. left in the second half. So basically the last eight to nine minutes you know, we're playing without Jackson um, to try to close it out. And uh, I, I just thought our guys really stepped up and made plays and were very physical and their effort just imposed their will defensively in that second half. Yeah. One more comment from the coach before we take a break and hear from athletic director Larry Williams. Uh, you have said all season long how much you really love this basketball team. You wish you could coach him for another five or ten years. How much are you going to miss these guys? Well, a lot. I mean, just they've taught me a lot. You know, they've, you know, you have those groups that kind of reinvigorate you. Um, you know, and obviously we talked there after we knew it was, there was some closure a little bit with our guys of all the different stories that each guy has in the locker room and uh, what they've been through to get to this point to, you know, do some of the things that we did this year is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, for me, over 25 years as an assistant head coach, I've kind of seen the highs and the lows. Um, but for me, it was about as enjoyable a year as, as I've had uh, personally. And those guys really impacted me and, you know, my family. And for that, yeah. you know, we'll be forever thankful. There you go. Hey, we're going to take a break. When you come back, a special message with Director of Athletics Larry Williams right after this. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie-cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. 
Every day is completely different in the market and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. I'm here. This isn't a stop on my way somewhere else. This is my way up. This city, this university. Akron is where I learn to outwork and outsmart. To aim high, then raise the bar. Because hits never settle for less. No entitlement, no excuses, just my education. My future. I'm on the rise and we are Akron. Okay, welcome back. And here's a special message from Director of Athletics, Larry Williams. Well, thanks, Joe. This sure is a bittersweet time, isn't it? It was about two weeks ago where we were coming off an, an absolute uh, high. Uh, everyone was, was energized. Rifle had qualified for the national championship. Uh, uh, men's indoor track had just won yet another uh, uh, conference championship. Uh, and the men's basketball team in front of a raucous crowd uh, really did uh, uh, put a good one on uh, Kent State as, uh, that made us all quite happy and uh, clinched for them the regular season conference championship, the number one seed, um, and uh, really did demonstrate that our basketball team did have uh, the best chance of, of taking that automatic qualifying uh, trip to the NCAA tournament. What a high it was. And then to go through the next two weeks and to see the, the entire uh, structure uh, start to come unglued. We originally made the decision to play uh, the maxion that we all look forward to in front of no fans. Uh, I, it, that was really hard to get your, uh, your arms around, at least for me visually. I just couldn't imagine it because it's such an integral part of what we do uh, to have our friends and fans and supporters all there supporting uh, the, uh, the basketball teams as they uh, venture out into, uh, into those competitive waters. It was then even more difficult uh, last Thursday morning. We as athletic directors for the conference met uh, early in the morning, really trying to decide what to do in the wake of the news that uh, one of the pro basketball players had, uh, had contracted the COVID virus. And, uh, and, and churned as we did uh, through those conversations, we made the decision we were still gonna try to push forward as we had planned. Uh, we would test each of the each of the young men that were going to participate uh, prior to participation. We would we would give them the option not to play. Uh, and indeed, I went in and, and delivered both those uh, both those pieces of information. And there was not a soul in the in the entire uh, gym that did not want to play. Uh, and it was shortly thereafter where we got the news that uh, it probably more, made more sense. Uh, from the perspective of all the other leagues in the in the uh, country, to cease operations for the for the conference championship basketball tournament, and so we too made that decision. And I had to return to the locker room and deliver one of the hardest messages I've had to deliver uh, in my time as an athletic director, and that was we were not going to be able to play. To look at each of those student athletes in the eye and to see that that opportunity was going to be taken from them, uh, was not going to be present for them, was really 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 hard, and uh, and I feel terrible. Uh, for that, uh, for the student athletes, for the coaches, and for everyone involved in, in Af Akron athletics. And in fact, when, you, when I think about it a little bit more and I take a step back, it was really difficult from, uh, from a lot of perspectives. Well, we're here now, we have a little bit of time to reflect. And one thing I hope we take from it is a realization that these opportunities to participate in college athletics are so precious we're going to do everything we can here uh, administratively and from a coaching standpoint to make sure that we really do prepare ourselves. We've got an opportunity here to make ourselves even better and I'm really excited about what we can do with this extra time. We'll get the, uni the uh, university back up and, and, and running full time. We'll get the, the, uh, the athletic program running up full time and we're really excited about what the future holds as we, as we move into the fall of 2020 for Akron Athletics. I hope that everyone will stay uh, committed to it, just as our student athletes, our coaches, and our administrators will. And uh, and uh, I, I leave with a, with a message, 
Let's go, Zips. Let's make this better than ever. Roman was born with a hole in his heart. But thanks to the experts at SUMA who found the problem and fixed it quickly, he's feeling 26 again. Not 76. Minimally invasive heart procedures, many performed in under two hours. SUMA Health, vital for getting back in the game and more. Okay, welcome back to Zips Basketball Weekly. As you can tell here in the set, there was a lot of postseason awards. And coach, let me start right now by telling you what a great job you did this year. Coach, either I would have been shocked if anybody else would have got that award, but you picked fifth in the East, you get a national championship. That that's a great job of coaching. No, I appreciate it. Um, I expect you to be a little biased. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. No, it you know, involves a lot of people. I've said that the entire time since the award came out, and I really mean it. Like, I'm smart enough to know when you're doing something that's, you know, this unique and trying to create memories like we're trying to create and the team and uh, all the success that the team had, it just involves a lot of yeah. people, you know, whether it's you and Frenchie and other support staff members, it's our coaching staff, it's the managers, sure. it's our academic personnel, it's the administration, it's marketing, it's tickets, it's, I mean, you can go on and on and on and on, you know, it's our strength staff, it's, you know, just the players, there's so many people involved in this, and I just probably missed several groups uh, there, but it, it, uh, it truly does take a village. I think it's a reflection of our entire group from administration down and, and um, you know, very, very, you know, very blessed and grateful to have an opportunity to work with all of those people and in particular our players. Well, let's start right at the top, get a comment uh, from Coach about all the awards. Lauren Christian Jackson, first team, all-conference player of the year. Yeah, no-brainer. Yeah, That's the first for sure. thing that comes to mind for me. I mean, the way that, that he played, his consistency, his leadership, his ability to be a connector in, a lock, in the locker room, as we spoke about on numerous occasions. And then obviously his play, you know, intangible play, statistical play. You know, I, you know, I, I thought he was on the, you know, the MAC champion, you know, the, uh, you know, the best, the best player in our league throughout the course of those 18 games and really the, you know, the whole schedule. When you look at everything, and there's a lot of really good players, uh, you know, that I'm sure that be other people would like to make a case for. But when you yeah. win at the level that that our team did and play the way he did, um, you know, I just thought thought it was a thought it was a no-brainer. You know, congratulations to him, well deserved and and definitely earned. Tyler Chi, second team All-Conference coach. Yeah, no, Tyler's a terrific player, and you know, for us as a coach coaches the luxury of having two point guards out there yeah. you know in the way the game's played now the way we play stylistically um, to have Christian out there and Tyler with him you know those two guys fit each other like a glove um, you know they they really did you know once you know obviously a bigger guard one maybe a little bit smaller the strengths of one you know and when you put the two together it was almost like a perfect and, and you add the strengths of the other one you put together it's almost like a perfect pu like puzzle just putting it right together just perfect fit the way those two played together so you know well deserved for Tyler and you know I'm biased as I mentioned you know you should be biased I thought some of our guys even should have been higher yeah. you know I'm, I'm, I'm pretty high on Tyler I mean I think he's a terrific player but as much as anything really proud of the growth that yeah. he's had you know both on and off the court during the two years yeah. Zarius Williams had one year as a zip, but he made the most of it, Coach, third team all-conference. He sure did. I think, you know, other than Willie Jackson had as many double-doubles as yeah. anyone in our league and, and uh, you know, just did so many things for our team. He was one I thought should have been higher as well and, and uh, did just a great job uh, for us and brought that experience level, you know, of being in a winning locker room previously. And, and uh, I thought that was critical for the development and growth of our program. And, and Azarius offered a lot of things, obviously basketball-wise as well. 
uh, is very intelligent and really impacted the game at both ends of the floor. And finally, Channel Banks uh, on the All Mac defensive team. Great defensive effort all season long. Oh, it was great. You know, I thought uh, him being on there was well deserved. I thought Reac should have been on there. I'll be quite honest. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think those two guys, night in and night out, what they did for our defense. You know, Channel typically uh, defended the other team's best perimeter player, and we would cross match him at times, and he would guard ones and twos and threes and fours and. You know, Dang could switch ball screens and do different things and play guards and front court players. And, you know, obviously we got contributions on that end from everybody, Joe. But those two guys I thought were, you know, absolutely spectacular from a consistency standpoint on the defensive end, both Banks and React. Yeah. Coach, congratulations. You once again, congratulations to all our postseason award winners. We're going to take a break when we come back. Season uh, coming up should be an interesting one. As Coach said, there's some unfinished business. We're going to have a preview of next season with the Zips right after this. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. I'm here. This isn't a stop on my way somewhere else. This is my way up. This city, this university. Akron is where I learn to outwork and outsmart. To aim high, then raise the bar. Because Zips never settle for less. No entitlement, no excuses, just my education. My future. I'm on the rise, and we are Akron. Well, if you're a University of Akron basketball fan, I know you are already looking forward to next season, and Coach... Boy, it's a great nucleus coming back. I know you're looking forward to it also. Really excited. You know, obviously, uh, once we get a chance to kind of distance ourselves from yeah. the season, we'll really, I think, appreciate that excitement even more. We're already working diligently uh, from a staff standpoint, our thought process on, you know, what do we need to do to get better? How do we continue to grow? Obviously, we have a great nucleus returning, yeah. you know, and that, that starts with uh, we have a great foundation. And I'm not talking about just in terms of the talent of the players returning and the guys who are going to become eligible. I'm talking about foundationally our culture because that's the most important right. thing. And what this team did to lay that out in concrete rather than in quicksand, which is a big difference, um, is huge. And then obviously we're adding, you know, three talented guys that we signed uh, people and players in the fall and uh, we're continuing to recruit and then you've got the dynamic Joe of this you know do they allow seniors to have an additional year of eligibility uh, because of the extenuating circumstance with the virus yeah. so you know it's it's in flux for sure it's very dynamic and we're going to try to get our arms around it on a daily basis but you know all in all very excited about yeah. the direction of our program and where we're headed and anxious to build upon this year. Can you give any uh, insight on maybe what the non-conference schedule might look like? Well, we're not complete. It's not completed yet. Yeah. We're still working on it and putting it together. Um, but we're going to have some challenges, no different than we did this yeah. past year, and playing against different styles and home and away and neutral and yeah. you know it'll it'll be uh, it'll be really good for our team. Our guys will be excited about the opportunity, just like they were this past year. And uh, we'll put one together that helps us, you know, get ready for a Mid-American Conference play. What's the timetable now for summer workouts and maybe individual workouts? You know, we really don't know because yeah. uh, right now we're kind of on a stoppage, you know, where we, you know, have got to spend some time here making sure that, uh, you know, guys are taken care of from a health and safety standpoint. Yeah. Um, so typically we'd start spring workouts a couple yeah. weeks after the season ended. But as of right now, the NCAA is encouraged us to put a hold on that uh, as, the, as we continue to monitor uh, the virus and, and what's going on there, not only from a national perspective, but even international perspective. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty fluid as well, but I can tell you whenever they give us the thumbs up, we'll be excited to get back out there with them and start working. Coach, it's been great uh, doing the show with you each week, 13 weeks. We want to stop here and thank all our sponsors, uh, the Wentz Financial Group, our title sponsor. We'll be back here next year. I know you will be, too. Thanks for watching all season long. And always remember, go Zips. Wentz Financial Group presents Zips Basketball Weekly with John Gross. Investment management for your lifetime. Hosted by Joe Dunn. 
Contributing sponsors include Summa Health. It's your health. Let's own it together. Hilton Akron Fairlawn, the preferred hotel of Zips Athletics. And the Spaghetti Warehouse, famous for its 15-layer lasagna.